Hi, just for a change for this particular video, I thought it'd be useful to actually have a go at some of the maths mock test type of questions. So this particular one is a fairly short uh, video of about 20 minutes or so in length. It's going to be the first eight questions, but the thing about it is they are some of the most popular questions you're going to get on a GCSE maths paper. So it's well worthwhile stopping the video, having a go at each of the questions and then comparing your solutions. I hope it's useful to you. Please do add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at the first few questions for a practice test. Now this is actually a higher paper non-calculator and the whole idea with this is this is the kind of test that might be used in a school as a mock test. Um, it's actually been produced in this particular case by Edexcel, um, however there are lots of other um, boards that will do something very very similar. So we're going to be working through the first eight questions. As before please always stop the video, have a go at each of these questions. These questions come up time and time again in um, GCSE so it's always worthwhile getting to grips with these. So the first one is going to be a decimal multiplication. So when you're multiplying with decimals just simply multiply the numbers 54 times 24 and whatever algorithm you use to do that you might do it in this particular way and that's perfectly fine or you might do uh, you might use partitioning doesn't really matter how you do it providing you get those four digits, one, two, nine, six at the end, however you do it. And then really what we're doing is we're moving the decimal point once, twice, three times. So we're moving the decimal point from here back three times. So the actual answer will be 1.296 because it's gone once, twice, three times, and there it is. Okay, hopefully that's all right. So we're gonna move on to question number two. Please do stop the video and have a go at this one. So the height of a table is measured as 72 centimeters, and the important thing is correct to the nearest centimeter. So what we're saying is the lowest value this can possibly be is 71 Point 0.5 because when we round that up it's going to the nearest centimeter it's going to be 72 so we could write 71.6 but that wouldn't be the lowest value if we wrote 71.4 when we round that it would just be 71 so 71.5 is the lowest value it can possibly be the highest value has to be less than 72.5 because anything less than 72.5 would be rounded down to 72 hopefully that's okay for you let's move on to uh, one that's particularly a little bit more challenging which is to deal with volume now Part of this is all about imagining and looking at it and trying to kind of figure out what on earth is going on with this one. But it's a popular type of question. So please do have a look at this question, see if you can if you can work it through. So what we've got is a carton. The depth of the orange juice in the carton is eight centimetres. So we're saying that here's the orange juice. It's in here. And that point there is going to be eight centimetres centimeters so what that will do is it will give us the ability then to be able to work out the volume of orange juice as it is now so i'm just going to write as now here okay now in order to work out the volume as i did in a previous video fairly recently volume equals area times depth OK, and it's important, I think, to write these formulas out on a fairly regular basis. So to work out the area, we're going to multiply six times eight, which is this area here, six times eight. And then we're going to multiply it by the depth, which is 10. So the actual volume of orange juice in this particular carton is 480 centimeters cubed and that's as it is now sitting on a supermarket shelf or wherever it might be 
Okay, so Jane then closes the carton, then she turns the carton over so it stands on its shaded face. And now that's a little bit difficult to visualize. And the only advice I can give you is maybe if you use a book or something like that, a thick book or a cornflakes box or something like that, and kind of visualize in your mind that what's happening when she turns it over, she's got this carton now, which is like this. So it still looks roughly the same sort of shape, but the dimensions are quite different because Six centimeters is the same here, but this has moved to the very back. So it's actually 10 centimeters in height. And this 20 centimeters here is now sitting on the floor or sitting on the surface of the table. OK, so hopefully that's all right for you. And it really is that little bit of mental gymnastics that you've got to go to go through with these sorts of questions to try to figure out what's going on with them. Well worthwhile practicing. OK, so when turned, what have we got? Well, we know that we've got volume equals area times depth. OK. So the volume that we've got now is going to be 480 centimetres because Jane hasn't taken any of the orange juice out. Now, the area itself, well, we're looking for now the height, the new height of the orange juice, which is I'm going to call it X. OK, so the new height that I'm looking for is this height. So the area is going to be six times x and the depth is going to be 20 and then really it's just a case of solving this for x okay so let's multiply out the bracket i've got 480 equals 6x and that's going to be multiplied by 20 so 480 equals 120 x and if i divide through by 180 120 i'm going to get that x equals 4. so in this particular case the new height of the orange juice is going to be four centimeters and that would be the answer to that particular question okay so hopefully that's all right for you if you're not sure about this please do uh, let me know in the comments and i'll try to uh, find some similar sort of questions for you to practice okay let's move on then to question number four which is a very, very typical non-calculator type MOX question uh, dealing with, in this particular case, standard form. The easiest way of dealing with this is just put all the numbers as they would be ordinarily written. So 10 to the power of 2 means we're moving the decimal point twice towards the right hand side. So this would be 3.8. This one is 10 to the power of minus 4, so we're moving the decimal point the other direction four times, so that's going to be 0 0.38. 380 is going to stay the same. This one is 10 to the power of minus 1, so it means the decimal point is moving from here one place back, so it's going to be 0 0.038. OK, so now all we've got to do is put these into order. We're going to say, well, we're going from the smallest number to the largest number. So the smallest number is this one here, which is 0 0.38 times 10 to the power of minus 1. Do please always make sure you write it in the format that you've been given. OK, um, second uh, largest is going to be this one here, which is going to be 3,800. 800 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Um, third largest is going to be this one here, which is 0 0.038 times 10 to the power of 2. And then the very last one, which is 4 here, is going to be 380. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, let's move on then to question number 5. There's actually eight questions in this particular video. So question number five uh, is a translation one. And again, I posted some videos on this fairly recently. Please do have a look at those videos uh, through the channel if you're not sure. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take any point. I'm going to use that one and we're translating it by the vector of five minus two. So uh, if I just move this point along five jumps, one, two, three, four, five, uh, 
and then two jumps down. So this point is now going to go from there to there. And I pretty much do the same for every other point. So this one is going to go five long and two down. It's going to go to there. And after a while, what you'll end up with is a shape that looks like that. OK, so that is a translation of shape P to that particular or with that particular vector. OK, let's move on then to question number uh, 5B, which is, again, another translation. But in this particular case, we're being asked to describe fully the single translation. OK, well, there are, again, some videos on the playlist uh, on the uh, channel, and you can have a look at the playlist on these types of videos. This one is actually a rotation because the shape itself hasn't actually changed in size. So it's not an enlargement and it's not reflected anything. It's actually rotated around. So this is a rotation. OK, now the easiest way of finding out where it's rotating through is that if I draw a line from each of the points, what you'll find is the center of rotation will just simply cross at one particular point. Now, this is just a little bit tricky to draw, but hopefully you can see here that what's emerging is we have one point where it's going to rotate around, which is this particular point, zero, one. OK, so it's a rotation. It's 180 degrees. OK, and it's around point zero one. One And that would be, for three marks, the answer to that particular question. OK, let's move on then to question number six, which is just simplify uh, two expressions here. Remember, we're not solving anything. We're just simply simplifying them. OK, so um, the first one. Well, x plus two squared just really means x plus two multiplied by x plus two. And that's all divided by the denominator of x plus two. So all we can do is cross one of those out and we get a simplified form of just simply x plus two. OK, next one is factorization. Again, uh, it just seems that I've posted a lot of these videos recently. OK, lots and lots of practice. We're going to simplify that. So the numbers are going to multiply out to two times three, which is six. A to the power of two times A to the power of three is A to the power of five. And then B to the power of one times B to the power of one is going to be B squared. So it's six a to the power of 5, b to the power of 2. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number 7, which is a ratios question. So what I'm going to do, I think, is in the description, I will put links to all of these videos and you'll be able to practice these additional questions if you want to. OK, so... Lots and lots of words on that one. So please do stop the video, have a go at this particular question and then compare your solution. But what we're told is, is that Talil is making some concrete and is mixing cement, sand and gravel in this ratio. So he's got cement and he's going to mix that with sand and he's going to mix that with gravel in the ratios of one to three to five. So in other words, if he was making nine kilograms of concrete, then he would use one kilogram of cement, three kilograms of sand and five kilograms of gravel. And he would get himself nine kilograms of concrete. And that would be fairly straightforward. However, he's not. He actually wants to make 180 kilograms. So in other words, he wants to make 20 times more. OK, if I multiply nine by 20, I'm going to get 180 kilograms of concrete. OK, so therefore, all I do is I multiply everything else by 20. So one times 20 is going to be 20 and he wants 20 kilograms of cement. Three times 20 is going to be 60 and five times 20 is going to be 100. So in terms of what he will need for 180 kilograms of concrete, he's going to need 
um, 20 kilograms of cement, 60 kilograms of um, sand and 100 kilograms of gravel. So let's have a look at what he's got available. Well, unfortunately, he hasn't got enough cement, but he's got plenty of sand and plenty of gravel. So does he have enough? Well, actually, no, he hasn't. <laughs> OK, he's got uh, he's got uh, enough of sand and gravel, but not enough cement. OK, and if you wanted to, you could put needs 20 kilograms and has 15 kilograms. OK, so he needs an additional five kilograms of cement if you wanted to write that. OK, let's move on then to the very last question on this particular playlist. This is an extremely familiar question. I've seen this one many times I think or something very similar to this on mock papers and past UCSE papers. Okay so it really is um, quite a lot of words but um, quite difficult to kind of pick out what it is they're looking for. So let's have a look firstly at the label of the bottle. So it says you've got wallpaper remover and you've got 600 millilitres of it. Then it says mix a quarter of that with 4,500 uh, 4, millilitres of water. So the first thing I would do is I would actually kind of ignore that and just figure out what this quarter is. So basically, I'm looking for a quarter of 600. Now, however you do that, you might divide through by four or you might do it by mental arithmetic, perfectly fine. But hopefully you'll get 150 millilitres of wallpaper uh, remover okay is what you actually need to mix with 4000 millilitres of water so let's have a look at just writing that down I've got remover and in the ratio to uh, water okay I've got 150 to 4500 okay now this is the bit that sort of is going to be a little bit tricky but basically um, Suha is going to use 750 millilitres of water. OK, so she's actually going to use that. This is the ratio that we've got or we just worked out, but she's actually got that. And we need to work out how much remover. So in other words, we need to know what this division is. OK, now. Um, <laughs> There's 16 minutes into the video here, so I'm not sure whether to actually... Yeah, go on then. What I'll do is I'm just going to go through a, a brief calculation, but... Uh, there's lots and lots of different ways that you might do this. Some people might do some really long division. What I would do, however, is I would tend to firstly write it as a fraction. Now, the reason I'd write it as a fraction is because it's very easy then to divide through by 10. So if I divide through by 10, I've got 450 over 75, OK? And then with a little bit of kind of uh, playing around, I know that this is divisible by 25. It's going to give me 3. And I know if I divide 25 into 450, what I'm actually going to get is going to be 18, OK? So I'm going to get 18 at the top. Now, you might take a few more steps to work through that. You might sort of go from there to there and do long division or something like that. That's perfectly fine. But it is a non-calculator paper. So you will need to find a developer technique in order to do this. I personally tend to use a lot of these uh, equivalent fractions just to make my life easier because I'm all about the simple numbers and the simple numbers for this means that 18 divided by 3 is going to be 6 okay so then I've got 150 divided by 6 and again you might do some sort of short division but uh, mental arithmetic is fine and that would give you 25 so in other words the millilitres of wallpaper uh, remover that Sue Hogan is going to use is going to be 25 millilitres. That's the end of this particular video. Um, I hope it's been useful to you. It is the first eight questions just to give us some idea of the kind of questions that come up in mock exams. Very popular, these sorts of questions. So please do let me know in the comments what you think. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.